Congress passed, uh, between this letter being issued to Mr. Bosco and the, and the production and distribution of 10 to 40 million of these braces and the implementation of your rule, did Congress pass a law? What changed? Uh, Congress did not pass a law, but something did change. What changed is that, that that item that was submitted was not produced and was not the item that was marketed. And Mr. Bosco, I think, before this committee said that people were using stabilizing braces in ways that he hadn't anticipated. Okay, so let, me, the market, right, let, me, let, me, let me challenge that assertion. So you say that the brace changed, and so you had to implement this uh, rule. Well, I, I've got here the actual original brace that this letter was responsive to. Are you telling me that this brace is exempt from your rule? Uh, what I'm saying is, is that if people have products that are not is this brace exempt from your rule? I can't sit here and classify. This is the brace you wrote the letter to. Classification, and if it's not a rule to be attached as a short-barreled rifle, it will not be subject to the rule. Can I get, could, would you please quit telling this committee that the brace has changed and that's why you did the rule when in fact you're not exempting the, the same brace that you gave this letter to? If the brace is submitted, we'll classify it. Would you a, submit, would you, do you still have the same agreement that this brace that you, that the ATF agreed to in 2012 should not be under the jurisdiction of your rule? If that brace is submitted with a firearm, we will examine and classify it. If it doesn't okay, qualify, reclaiming my time uh, because it's pretty obvious you're misleading people here when you say that the brace has changed because your rule affects the braces that didn't change. Federal judge states that the ATF's arm brace rule is unlawful. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms LLC. PAN Firearms, the NRA Certification Multifaceted Gun Training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like the channel, like the content, what I do here, you can support me. The link, everything is appreciated. Let's talk about this. Now, this is coming from a judge, Katzmark, who has basically ruled in the case of Brill versus ATF that the ATF's arm brace rule is unlawful and pretty much stated as much in his ruling. Now, this comes after, you know, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which also said that the ATF exceeded its authority. And this is huge because unlike Judge Reed O'Connor's ruling, which only affected the district and the plaintiffs in that case, Kassmark's ruling affects the entire nation. He has expanded it across the country. Now, he stated, and I'm just going to bring up little parts of this. He stated that the court is certainly sympathetic to ATF's concern over public safety in the wake of tragic mass shootings. The rule embodies salutary policy goals meant to protect the vulnerable people in our society, Judge Kassmark wrote in Brito versus ATF. But public safety concerns must be addressed in ways that are lawful. This rule is not. Okay, unlike previous rules against the ATF, Katzmark's order applies to the entire rule. That means it could affect tons of gun owners nationwide, with the number of affected brace guns estimated to be in the millions or even tens of millions. Okay, and as I stated, this is coming shortly after the Fifth Circuit Court said the same, basically the same thing. You cannot make legislation through a government bureaucracy. And that's exactly what the ATF did by pushing this rule. We all know this. But I'm going to come down and the court finds that the government's defendant's implementation and enforcement of the final rule substantially threatens to inflict irreparable constitutional harm upon the F FPC members, Judge O'Connor wrote in Mock versus Garland. Absent injunctive relief, the final rule will impair and threaten to deprive them of their fundamental right to keep and bear commonly used arms as a means of achieving an inherently lawful ends of self-defense. Providing that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, but we already know this part. Judge Kasmark has now taken things a step further in a related Brito case. His ruling stays enforcement of the law as it applies to everyone across the country, and that is monstrous. So there it is. 
this judge has basically taken the same wording from the Fifth Circuit and applied it to the whole country. So what does that mean for us here in Connecticut? Nothing. Because we have HB 6667, which is a law that specifically names others as assault weapons under state law. So we still have to abide by the state law first and foremost. We can forget about the federal level. We can ignore that for now. We can't ignore what the state is doing. So we still have to register our others, which majority of them are, do have arm braces on them. As of May 2024, they must be registered as assault weapons. Now, I read briefly, and I want to thank uh, the guys at Lock and Load. They have the podcast, which you should watch. They're very good. But you should check out the fact that and then this logically makes sense that if you're going to register your other as an assault weapon and you have a 16 inch barrel, that's key. You have a 16 inch barrel on it for all intentional purposes. You should be able to put a stock on that. You should be able to charge out the arm brace for a stock because according to Connecticut law and the definition of assault weapon, a stock is part of an assault weapon. So you should be able to change out your arm brace for a stock. And I picked that up, like I said, off of the Lock and Low podcast. And that logically makes sense. You go even further to say you should be able to lose the, you know, your dick stick up front. Because they're saying it's an assault weapon. Well, this is the definition of an assault weapon. It has a stock. The barrel is a certain length, you know, 16 inches plus. You should be able to change out those parts. But we're going to see what the state's going to do because, you know, they always have an answer to everything. Every time there's a court case where it goes against the anti-gun narrative, they tend to come up with new laws. I'm expecting them to go up before the podium in January next year and st state we need to do more. And then when he says we need to do more, he's not talking about the criminals. He never does. He's talking about us. He's going to restrict what we can do because that's the only <laughs> that's his entire angle. But. So there it is. Good news for now. Uh, we do have it's Grant versus Lamont, which does include others in its argument of saying that, you know, these items should not be banned. So once again, we'll go forward and see how it plays out. Hopefully it will move through the courts quickly, but you see how these things go. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.